Gregor, I'm with Pet Newsblad. What a show that race was. I have to, um, first off, probably just own up everything I predicted in our preview show was completely wrong. Dakuna Quickstep turns out amazing at Omloop. Yeah, you blasted him in the preview show, didn't you? I mean, it was a pretty cool scene at the start. They started in Ghent just across town here and finished in Ninove. We talked about that in the preview show, the old uh, Tour of Flanders finish. And uh, you could see Juliana Philippe getting out of the bus. With, he had a black jersey on because it was cold in the morning. And, and uh, this rainbow-colored bike and uh, the whole team riding on clinchers. And, and they came out fighting strong, Michael, so you had to eat your words. And I think, I think Ala Philippe was thinking about what you'd said on the show because the whole team just, just put, it, put the hammer down on Saturday. Well, well, you are right in that they should be thanking me. I think that I spurred them on uh, by calling them out. You know, keep in mind, it had been uh, only one win over the last 15 years up until the 2021 version of Omloop for Dakuna Quickstep. But, you know, as this race progressed, I was feeling pretty smart and confident in my statement. It, uh, it was Matteo Trentin. He really uh, broke the race apart on the Molenberg. He started a breakaway with a lot of pre-race favorites. Sepp Van Mark was there, Greg Van Avermaet was there, and three Dakuna Quickstep riders, Julian Alaphilippe. Davide Ballerini, and Zdenek Stibar. You know, it was looking like Dakuna Quickstep was in control, and then Julian Alphilippe did what Julian Alphilippe does. He attacked solo. Right there on the bn uh, just, you know, put the hammer down. We thought that was a bit early, a uh, bit of too much panache early on by Alaphilippe, but it, it looked promising for a while, and then uh, just things all came back together there before, before the, uh, the Murr. Yeah, well, uh, Julian Alphilippe can be described as too much panache pretty much any day of the week. Sometimes it works out for him, sometimes it doesn't. I do have to give a uh, tip of the hat to Tom Pitcock, British rider making his debut with Team Ineos. What a ride he had. He was in that breakaway. He put in a chase of Julian Alphilippe for a while. It didn't work out. Yeah, like, uh, like you said, though, it was Julian Alphilippe solo. He got caught at the base of the mirror a little bit before that. So that next D-bar crashed out of the breakaway. At this point, it looked like Dakuna Quickstep, who went from having all the cards, it looked like they had completely bungled it yet again at Omloop. Oh, up the mirror, credit where credit's Stu Gregor. Gianni Moscon, your dark horse pick for the race. Yeah, yeah. He, he was the rider on the front pushing the pace, but Dakuna Quickstep, they picked themselves back together. Casper Asgreen, and Julian Alphilippe, they went to the front as, they, uh, as the riders were approaching the finale, and... Just took ownership of the race. We're driving it. I wasn't really sure who they were driving it for until, you know, we got into the final kilometers. Yeah, and one other point too, Michael, is I remember earlier in the race also Yves Lampert crashed as well. So De Kunik Quickstep took a beating that day, but still came out all right. And that was one thing that Steve R said in his post-race interview that he would have probably felt the pain a bit more had one of his teammates not won the race. But uh, they did win the race. And as you pointed out, it was Asgren who... Last year uh, did so well in Coombe Brussels Cruden at the opening weekend. He was there pulling on the front. The team really rallied. As you said, I, I kind of thought the team had played its card with Alaphilippe, and that was that. But it seemed as though Alaphilippe was saving something in this race, maybe saving something for the... Because remember, we're still a month away from Flanders and, and uh, the other big classics. So maybe he was saving something back. But it was Asgren who really put the hammer down. And yeah, Ballerini, I was looking at the... the the names for the sprinters in that group because this was a huge group coming into uh, Ninove and we haven't seen a big finish like this in um, Omlahet Newsblatt in years, Michael. I can't remember the last time. And, and so, you know, they came through those final classic turns that the old Turf Landers used to take and there was that final corner there where uh, Ballerini placed himself well and of course second by Jake Stewart which had a lot of us looking at the start list figuring out who this guy was and uh, is. And a British rider, 20, 21 years old, FTJ rider, a group on FTJ, and third, Seth Van Mark. Yeah, let's break down this finish a little bit, Gregor, uh, because I, I've just got to go back and harp on Quick Step a little bit more. Because this team, you know, I, I was picking them apart in the preview show, didn't give them enough credit, but it, it, and that is a mistake that, you know, I will probably continue to make and they will continue to prove me wrong because the depth that this team has is just incredible. It's not just that they have a roster of super talented riders, it's that they have a roster of winners. For a team to build a culture where 
you know, their world champion can go on the attack, get caught. He's not going to win, but he puts himself back on the front and works for teammates. And then, you know, the next rider down the roster steps up and says, okay, I got this. I can, um, I can shoulder the pressure. I can finish off the job. You know, Dakuna Quickstep, they have a team of riders who are just waiting to step up for their turn to, you know, put the team on their back and cross the finish line first. And that's what Davide Ballerini did. I completely wrote him off before Amelie um, Pet News, but, and, you know, I probably shouldn't have. He had an amazing start to the season. He's uh, clearly taken a step up in 2021. He won two stages at Tour de la Provence. He got second on the final stage. So, you know, clearly very talented sprinter. He's 26 years old, probably just coming into his own. You know, it, reasonable to expect we're going to see a lot more winning from him. But to see him win at Amelie Pet News, that was a big shock. I did not think that he was going to be a rider to step up. It's going to be interesting to see if this multiple uh, options uh, tactic works in the bigger races because, okay, uh, De Kuno Quickstep always brings many uh, uh, knives to the street fight, as I like to say. And you got Ballerini, but uh, they need to have a sharp Alaphilippe if they want to take on Vanderpool, Vanner, who weren't there on the Umla Hep News Blot. Uh, because those guys are the killers and, and they need a killer to match. And that's where we're going to need to see Alaphilippe on form. Having the other options will, will work out well. You know, being able to send a Steve Bar on the attack and uh, Yves Lampert will, will surely weaken down Alpes and Phoenix, who doesn't have such an in-depth team and also a team like uh, uh, Walt Van Ertz, uh, Jumbo Visma team who took a hit with Mike Tunison uh, crashing recently. So. It'll be interesting, how, interesting to see how this plays out, but definitely this team has cards to play in a final. Knives, knives for the street fight. Yeah, to hear a quick step, they've, uh, they've got cards to play. I think that Julian Alphalib, he's always sharp. He's just got to be smart. You know, going solo yeah. before the mirror, it's brilliant watching the world champion riding off the front of a cobbled classic, giving it to the uh, entire peloton, but kind of boneheaded move. I, I personally think, you know, just... Come on. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to drop it. I mean, you I won't let him it. rest. First, first you bash him for not winning the home loop ever in the history of uh, cycling mankind, and then now you're bashing him for winning the race, but, uh, but Alaphilippe's a bonehead now. So. <laughs> they can't win. They can't win. No, I, I'm, a, I'm a tough guy to please. Anyways, getting into this finish, Gregor, Jake Stewart. Who the heck is Jake Stewart? Jake Stewart is a 21-year-old rider riding for FDJ. This is his first year on the world tour, he has shown a lot of promise in the classics and the youth categories, U23 and juniors, but for him to get second place at Omloop Head Newsblad, huge, huge step up. Talk about just, uh, you know, shouldering the pressure on a new team in a new environment. Can't wait to see what Jake yeah. Stewart does. I got to pick on Sepp Van Mark a little bit. You said, fantastic third place for Sepp Van Mark. We, um, you know, we were kind of wondering how is this transfer to Israel Startup Nation going to work out for him. Well, he put himself in the breakaway. He put himself on the podium at the first Classic. So, fantastic start. That guy's got to work on his sprint, though. He had the box seat. Uh, he had the box seat. He was on Davide Ballerini's wheel. So well placed. And when Davide Ballerini started his sprint, Sepp Van Mark went backwards. So, he's going um, to he's gonna have to sharpen his uh, sprint or figure out his winning tactic in the on, final Michael, kilometers were, were, uh, did you, before did you, Gantwell, did you watch this race or were you out on a group ride this weekend? I mean, this is, uh, I mean, you, it was a bunch sprint. We get Ballerini in the group. So, I mean, he's obviously not going to match Ballerini. And uh, set that mark, he played it smart. Uh, in the bunch sprint, what he did is he picked the best rider's wheel to be on, and that was Ballerini. He just rode it in and got the best placing he could of, for the day. I and mean, he's not going to be able to beat a ballerini and a finish like that. With that attitude, Come. with that attitude, <laughs> I, I will say it was a fantastic bike throw between kind of like, you know, I don't want to call Sepp Van Mark an old dog. He is, I, I hope we are going to see many more winning days from Sepp Van Mark, but it was pretty cool to see him, Heinrich Hausler and Philippe Jobert all, all throwing their bikes for the finish. These are guys who have been around the block. I could not believe seeing Heinrich Hausler getting fourth place at Omloop Head News Black. Keep in mind, he was racing cyclocross just at the back of the field, uh, last row call up in the cyclocross uh, World Cups. Just a guy who loves racing his bike and uh, shows no sign of stopping anytime soon. And for him to, yeah, <laughs> just keep putting himself at the front in these classics, tip of the hat to Heinrich Hausler. Yeah, he did well, Hausler, and uh, 
of course, he, he's always had uh, sprinting chops, so everybody remembers that second place to Mark Cavendish way back when in Milan San Remo. So good ride by him, and uh, at least you're praising someone on the day, Michael. That's good to hear. I mean, this bashing of the Kuna Quickstep, bashing of uh, Van Mark, I just, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, uh, definitely a surprising finish with that, with that bunch sprint finish. And, and good to see Jake Stewart spoke with him after the, after the uh, race. And for him, that second place was almost like the victory of Ballerini, he said. And that was quite a big showing for him. And it's important for him and that French team as he makes his way into his cycling career. Yeah, so um, I don't know. We will uh, certainly be keeping in closer eye on him in the upcoming classics. He will, of course, be at Gent Wevelgem and uh, probably the rest of the Flanders classics. So keep an eye on Jake Stewart. Who knows what he is going to continue to do this year. Um, impressive stuff. The women, a lot of comparisons between the men's race and the women's race, I have to say. Like Julian Alaphilippe, Dutch rider Demi Vollering, she went solo for this uh, uh, super team SD Works, formerly Bull Stolman. Like Julian Alaphilippe, she got caught at the base of the mirror. And like Julian Alaphilippe, Demi Vollering just had a incredibly deep, squad to back her up. It was then taken over by Anna van der Bregen, the world champion. She attacked over the mirror, didn't quite work out. She attacked again over the Bosberg. She eventually pried herself free from the very dwindled down women's lead group and went solo for over the last 10 kilometers to claim a win. I think that this is, you know, gr very, very, very good to see of Anna v van der Bregen. She has, I think it's fair to say, kind of struggled with motivation over the last couple of years, and fair enough. She's won basically everything that she could hope to win. Olympic champion, world champion, uh, you know, Palmer Egg, too long to list. So yeah, she has been searching for motivation in the sport. She tried her hand in mountain biking. I think it was in like 2019. She skipped the first half of the road season, was doing things like the Cape Epic. And yeah, she has announced that she is retiring after the Olympics. I love seeing her come on to, uh, what is probably going to be her final season with a lot of fire in her legs. We saw her from a long way out taking charge at the front on the cobbled roads, uh, really being a leader for SD Works, and then finishing off the job with a solo win. You know, if you were worried about seeing Anna von der Bregen kind of ride off into obscurity, you know, uh, enter her final season as a uh, formality just to go defend her title at the Olympics, that's not what's happening here. I think that she is wanting to end her career with a big bang. Everybody loves seeing a world champion solo to a victory. And keep in mind, that was the first, uh, first race for many of the women, uh, at least in Europe, and riding that day. It was a, it was a clear day, good weather, and, and as, as a good test for them to be out there racing uh, first race of the season. So everybody got their legs spinning this weekend and what was a good addition of the Homelot Head News Block. Again, surprising sprint finish, good world champion uh, solo finish for the women.